Hello everyone, my name is Cyber World Sec and today we are going to look at a case study on the found cross-site scripting vulnerability in TikTok. Not only we are going to look at that how the attacker found this vulnerability, but its impact, the reason why this vulnerability is arising and its prevention. Before I start the video, just a small disclaimer that this video is for education purposes only and all the tests which I have done in this video are on a safe to test website by Contra Security. And also the TikTok website has been recreated by the name of TikTok over here. So let's get started. Firstly, you may notice one thing is that this website or this vulnerability was found in the subdomain of TikTok and not on the main TikTok page. So the subdomain of TikTok, which looks like this, ads.tiktok.com, just like even Google has so many subdomains like play.google.com, studio.google.com, just like that. This is ads.tiktok.com. This is again a subdomain of TikTok where the file name was found. So this is how the web page looks like. It provides a search bar for the user for search for any term related to TikTok ads. So now when a person searches for the word XXX, which like is quite a unique word, I know it's I obviously it won't be found in the TikTok ads section. So there were results like no results found for XXX and like nothing quite great over here to see. So for a normal person, this would be just normal, right? Okay, it's quite cool. But for attacker's mindset, what he will see is that whatever term he typed in over here has been reflected back to him and it is reflected back on the web page itself. So when this thing happens, the website might be vulnerable to HTML injection or cross-site scripting. So now what the attacker does is that he actually types in or puts in a payload of his own. So now, how does cross-site scripting work? Before, like, like what is cross-site scripting, how does it work? So cross-site scripting works by manipulating a vulnerable website so that it returns a malicious JavaScript to its users. So what is ha actually happening is that the attacker is able to inject a malicious or any JavaScript inside the search box or anywhere, uh, like any parameter which is reflecting. And when that JavaScript runs, the attacker can steal many sensitive data. For example, in this image, you can see that this is a victim and all of his data is actually being sent to the attacker, which is this person over here. So all of this was done by XSS. So XSS is a medium level vulnerability, which is found in many websites and is also quite a common vulnerability. So how to check for XSS vulnerability is that you type in a JavaScript payload. So how does like you might have learned JavaScript or if you, if you don't know, see JavaScript in JavaScript, there's the script, it starts and ends with the script word. And in between you can type in whatever JavaScript you want to run. So I, the, the, what I want to run is this alert function. So what the alert function will do is that it will bring up a pop-up and whatever I've typed in between these two quotes will be written in the pop-up. Okay, so when I actually press enter and I search for this word, as you can clearly see, there is a pop-up saying hacked. Okay, so whenever this thing happens, whenever you see a pop-up, this pop-up is a POC, proof of concept, that this vulnerability, XSS vulnerability is indeed there in the website. So you can click on okay, and now you may feel see the URL, this is how the URL looks like, ads.tiktok the subdomain of TikTok and the search term. This search term is the same as whatever we just typed. Over here, this percentage 3C is actually for the less than arrow sign, or sorry, for the greater than arrow sign. It has been converted like this. It has been encoded, URL encoding. So it's kind of the same thing. Okay, so for that pop-up, one just needs to copy up this URL and send it to anyone. So let's see how the attacker exploits this. So what the attacker will do is that firstly, attacker will set, does do his own stuff that he will set up his own server. So the attacker, if you want to read this, you can read it by pausing the video. So now the attacker will set up his own server. Once his server has been set up, 
now he will like now inject some vulnerable javascript into the website so whatever the attacker or the victim which gets this link will be that will be redirected to his website so again let me explain you again see just have a carefully look at this link over here this link is https okay that's fine then there is ads.tiktok.com which is quite fine you are okay with going to tiktok ads slash help is okay search is okay queue is okay but what comes after queue is the problem as you can see after queue there is a script word and it ends with a script word and document.location is equal to this website so what this line says is that it will redirect you to a website known as www.tiktok-ads.com you don't know that website right even though it sounds familiar it's not okay ads.tiktok is a subdomain of tiktok while tiktok-ads is a completely different website it's like searching google with like, rather than 2 o rather than then you can just replacing it 5 o like g o o g l e so these two are totally different websites even though they might sound similar so now when the attacker or the user actually clicks on this link okay now the user will click on this link and now he is no longer on tiktok and he is on tiktok dash ads okay so he was actually redirected to tiktok dash ads and since even if a user is like conscious that yeah like maybe this url looks a weird but the attacker is so smart that he chose the website which he controls as so similar that no one will be able to tell much difference and yep he, they will enter their credentials and log in so now what happened is that when you saw this the user will see this and it will say okay it's tiktok tiktok ads let's put in my email and password and let's log inside so now the victim will type in his email address and his password and he will log inside so the victim doesn't know that whatever password and he typed and whatever the, the username he typed actually comes back to the attacker okay now since the attacker has his username now the attacker can go into the actual subdomain of tiktok which was ads.tiktok and he can sign in using the victim's credentials i'll explain you all of this once again in a quick summary so what actually happened is that using xss the person or the attacker redirected the victim to his own website and his own website was something like recreation of the tiktok itself like it totally looked like tiktok only like anyone can write html and javascript code right so just like the people who developed tiktok ads like the ads.tiktok which you can see over here this is how the tiktok website looks like the attacker actually recreated this website on his own and his website which was the just a second i'll just open this website up yeah and his website was tiktok dash ads okay and this all was actually made by the attacker himself so what the attacker did is he made a website which looked like just like tiktok so he typed in all that html and made it look like this and now if the real or if the victim actually even wants to go to the real website like even if he checks the url and it's like yeah it's ads.tiktok but he clicks on it so it, he will be actually redirected over here so you might be thinking that like what's the great deal i know that like if there is a email and one should not click on the email so what if i didn't click on the email at all and you maybe if the person finds out that okay fine something like this looks fishy over here why do i need to sign in again so what only not only xss can do redirection xss can also steal your cookies and also do other lots of stuff for example without you knowing it can send your cookies to the attacker and now the attacker can use those cookies to actually log inside so this is not all what xss can do xss is actually quite more stronger than or more cvv than we think so now let's look at why this actually happened so yep we have logged in as okay let's see the vulnerable code so what actually happened is that when 
firstly when a person searches he'll get some search and when the results are not found as you can see over in this line no results for span the request dot get parameter queue so whatever results whenever result was not found it was reflected here in the name of no results for and the word so the word was replaced by the javascript and that javascript ran and if a javascript runs it can do anything on the website right it can like control just like bring a pop up or bring up anything so this is why this actually happened and here is why this code is vulnerable and for the prevention of xss so that this xss doesn't happen is a reason okay i'll just show you why what we can do first thing we can do is that filter input on arrival because if you might remember the code which we the payload which we use was this thing script document dot location or to be simpler let's uh, do this one okay let's look at this one the payload which we used was this script alert hacked slash script so now what if i say a filter that no one is allowed to use a tag of a greater than or less than sign so how can a person without using tags run javascript right so that is something then also if i say that no one is allowed to use the slash symbol no one is allowed to use the keywords like script or something or any tags so just like this if i do some filter input and i don't allow the xss or any payload to come inside then that is filtered input on arrival that is that whatever comes in i am filtering out the all the possible malicious stuff and thus preventing myself from xss attack and then there next is encoding data on output is that whenever the output is encoded the it doesn't remain html like javascript anymore so if it, if it is not it's javascript anymore it won't run as javascript that's why xss won't work then there's use appropriate response headers that is you tell that like you are just tell that whatever searching like whatever you are searching for is not html or javascript it is a text or you can tell it like what the content type is for example the browser won't misunderstand it to be a javascript thus preventing from xss and in modern day security what we use is known as content security policy content security policy will automatically block up the xss like this is that this javascript doesn't belong from this place that's why it will block it content security policies can be defined by the pers person who owns the website and all so this is how you can prevent xss attack so that's all xss attack is that you can inject some malicious javascript and everything will work and just attacker can do lots of stuff with it it's a medium severity i guess i've told you this before and i hope you like this this video please like share subscribe and i'll see you next time bye bye